Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm delighted beyond description for this very, uh, very great uh, uh, introduction to me by both the chairpersons with so much of love, with folded hands. I acknowledge my, my sincere gratitude to both of you, sir, and, and, and the way you have, you, have, you, have, you have been with me in my career. Thank you very, very much. Dear friends, uh, the time that we have at our disposal is 20 minutes. So what I have decided to do is to talk about the burden of the non-communicable diseases during COVID-19 pandemic, because as you know, I work for the government of India in the NCD. And number two, also to also talk about the impact of NCDs on COVID-19. Dear friends, uh, I must tell you that uh, the, the, the Uh, you know, you know, you know. Actually, we, 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 we. Most important and the challenging contemporary issue in the COVID time is the impact of NCDs on COVID-19. That is what has been declared by the WHO. WHO Global Share India. How NCD impacts COVID-19. So I'll be speaking about this in 20 minutes. Now there are many NCDs which has impacted the of uh, the, the the course of the COVID-19. I'll confine myself to the diseases where I'm familiar, like diabetes, obesity, uh, dyslipidemia, and hypertension. I will not touch upon others in great detail. I will just show a few things. Number one, in government of India, we're acutely conscious that particularly the COVID-19 has been problematic for NCD screening, case identification, and referral systems of cancer. <clears throat> in fact, there has been a great decrease in the cancer diagnosis number and lot of acute coronary syndrome, there is increase in out of hospital deaths and long-term complications of MI. Now, you know, I call this NCD and COVID-19. This is not actually my invention. This is invention by the WHO. We call it syndemic. Two epidemics of diabetes or NCD epidemic and COVID epidemic, well, it's syndemic. It's a syndemic of COVID-19 and NCD. Now, now it is, it is, we know that NCD today is the leading cause of death and disability globally. 70% of all deaths, 80% of all disabilities are because of NCDs. Dear friends, now if you look to the disruption of the NCD work due to COVID in, our, in, in the WHO and special in India, now about 77% of the countries reported disruption of the NCDs. And as I said, in India, mostly report disruption in the implementation in 40% of the NCD surveys we have to abandon. And also mass communication campaign in other 40% we had to suspend. Now, because the training program in the primary health was disrupted in 65% of the cases, and that is the reason, but we're making it up now. I will go to the conclusion to save time, but suffice it to mention, with rapid spread of COVID-19 across the world, the ability of the countries to address and respond to NCD has been impacted, but rightly so, rightly so, it is impaired. You know, it also brought out two important uh, benefits in NCD. We brought the first ICMR headquarter guideline on teleconsultation on the 25th of March, and ICMR brought the second guideline on the May 2021 for the NCDs very specifically. And to study the impact of COVID-19 on NCDs, two projects ministry has given, one to the EBS. Uh, under the on, under the aims regarding the impact of COVID-19 on NCDs and impact of diabetes, hypertension, obesity, on hypertension to group of our people, ministries allotted the work. Now I will not do details of it. Now I'll I'll pass on to the to the most impact that that if you if you look to the impact, the huge impact, OPD service suspension of many activities has been affected. The way out of probably teleconsultation and. From here, I'll start the impact of NCD on COVID-19. Dear friends, NCDs are world's highest killer, 71%. Now, it has been shown that if you took the most common comorbidities of COVID-19, decreased patients, you know, most common comorbidities in COVID-19, deceased patients, the COVID-19 patients who died, if you see the most common comorbidities are died, ischemic heart disease, atrial fibrillation, stroke, hypertension and diabetes, dementia, COPD, acute cancer last five years, chronic liver disease, 
and the chronic renal failure. Dear friends, this is the March 2020 paper, <clears throat> one of the latest paper. It's an Italian study, but a global meta-analysis study that if you take the COVID-19 patients who died, what were the comorbidities, NCD comorbidities which affected it? The number one was possibly hypertension in about 74% cases. I'll come back to it again. The second in line was definitely in 34% cases was diabetes. It'll be more than 100 because somebody had more than one comorbidity. And next was about ischemic heart disease. And of course, other things will come one by one. So 98.8% of the deceased COVID-19 patients had at least one NCD comorbidity and 50% had at least three comorbidities. And hypertension was most prevalent at the 74%. Now coming to the burden of NCD during COVID-19 pandemic. Now, you see, if you look at the hospitalization risk, 72% of the people who got admitted because of COVID-19. That means that more serious disease had at least one NCD and they're more likely to be males, had substantially more comorbidity than non-hospitalized patients. And the comorbidities were uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and obesity, most important. Now, if, to the left, if, if, if you look at the effect of COVID-19 on people living with NCDs, you'll find that they that disrupt the chronic care. We'll not go into it. But this is a very important slide. I've taken it uh, from the Journal of Diabetological Sciences, very famous journal. Now, risk for hospitalization, how it increases if we have one of these conditions and COVID-19, if with one of these comorbidities compared to people without the conditions, you see the difference. Asthma, one and a half times more risk of hospitalization. Hypertension, three times more risk of hospitalization. Obesity, three times more risk. Diabetes, three times more risk. CKD, I think I Karmarkar spoke about CKD just some time before, four times higher. Severe obesity, 4.5 times higher. And if two conditions together, again, 4.5 times. If there are three or more comorbidities, five times higher. So the bottom line is that the NCDs make COVID serious enough to get admitted, starting between 1.5 to 5.5 times. Coming to the core subject, diabetes and COVID-19. Now, Simple things first, because simplest are the greatest tools. Will control diabetes, better outcome than poorly controlled diabetes. Absolutely certain. By hook or by crook, you must control diabetes before, at the time of hospitalization, during hospitalization, very important. Also to prevent post-COVID, long COVID, after discharge. In the context of COVID-19, acute hyperglycemia is a greater risk factor for adverse outcome. Now, COVID-19 infection, uh, with, with atypical diabetes can present like this. There, you know, the COVID-19 infection increases the risk of emergency states of hyperglycemia with ketones. DKA can come around. Diabetic ketoacidosis also can be brought out. And also hyperospular comma honk also can be there. These atypical presentations have challenges in the inpatient. Dear friends, there are two types of boxes here. One is mild rate, dark rate. Now, what is dark rate is most important. Now, increased severity of COVID-19 and rapid progression to cardiorespiratory failure occurs in COVID-19 with, with diabetes mellitus. Therefore, there are various ways, metabolic rate, tissue hypoxia, interstitial damage, all increasing. Now, the, the, the immune modulation, aggravation of the inflammation, very important. So, new drugs are used nowadays, increased glucotoxicity, endothelial damage, uh, thrombolytic risk. All things that increase multi-organ dysfunction when there is a COVID-19. Dear friends, if you want to treat a non-infected patient with diabetes, I will go to this to the chart directly. Now you see that if you want to give the practical recommendations for management of diabetes in patients with COVID-19, very mild disease, prevention of infection in diabetic, with outpatient care, you want to you have a diabetic to prevent infection, you have to sensitize the same as we other do, optimize your current therapy. Caution with the premature discontinuous of the therapy and utilize of the telemedicine and connected health models, if possible, to make maximal self containment. In patient or intensive care unit, monitor the new onset diabetes in infected patients. Always monitor because they'll be on, on diagnosed diabetes or because of infection, acute stress, new diabetes can come in. Management of infected patients with diabetes in intensive care will come in a minute. You have to monitor plasma glucose, localized pH, blood ketones. But you know, most important, 
that in, in, in all these patients, one has to maintain a high index of suspicion for the hyperinflammation, for the ARDS, and also one has to have readiness for any emergency that can come in COVID-19. Now, I will not go to details of the, of, the, of the blood values, but you know, this is list of the very simple list of the drugs, what can be used. Uh, we use in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus, the, the infectious disease expert and diabetes experts in United States, Slim. We find uninfected, but living in environment with, with, with prevalent COVID-19, you can use anything. Insulin, metformin, tazolidin dyans, DPP-4, GLP-1 analog, alpha glue inhibitor, you can use anything. You can also use uh, with, with, with caution, sulfonuria and SGL2 inhibitor. SGL2 inhibitor was supposed to produce dehydration, but after the DARE trial presented in the ADA, <clears throat> now people have accepted to not to discontinue dapagliflozin. It was already on board. Now, if there's a very mild disease, absolutely mild disease, you, one can use insulin, DP4 inhibitor, metformin, GL per analog. Uh, sulfonuria also can be used with caution, but patient hospitalized, insulin is the drug of choice. So therefore, hospitalized patients with severe disease admitted to ICU, the drug of choice is insulin. One can, one can potentiate it by giving DPP-4 or metformin. That is the most important message that in, a, in a hospitalized patients in the ICU, one can give other drugs if you can produce control, but insulin is the drug of choice. Now, therefore, the anti-diabetic treatment during COVID-19, usually patients at home, anti-diabetic therapy can be maintained in patients receiving, patients having mild disease, but insulin is preferred choice for the glycemic control once they're, once they're admitted. Of course, one has to prevent COVID-19 infection and complications in people with diabetes mellitus. And these are the common things which all of us know about it, good hygiene, we call it uh, social distancing, masking, and, and whatever, good hygiene, regular monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it is, it is very important as per the IDF, also in Indian government, diabetes included among priority groups vaccination program, if the third dose to be given, booster dose to be given, or Omicron preventive dose to be given, diabetics will be given preference. Now, it is IDF strongly recommends governments to prioritize access to vaccine people who have got diabetes mellitus. As for Government of India, Minister of Health, Family Welfare, people with diabetes are considered high risk category and need to get uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccination. Underlying diabetes mellitus is considered a risk factor for increased COVID-19 disease. Tight control blood glucose, I'm telling it third, fourth time, is very important. Tight control blood glucose level prevents diabetes mellitus. Insulin can be used. I'll not go details of it to save time. This is very important. If you look at the prevalence of diabetes among subjects with COVID-19 admitted to the hospital, you will find, you will find that severe disease, severe disease are the are the uh, severe disease are the ones with the with the we, we can find the uh, dark red lines. Now you find that the severe disease are, are, are usually with the people who have diabetes mellitus. You can see that this is non-severe disease. See, non-severe disease are, 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 are people who do not have diabetes usually, but severe disease usually have diabetes mellitus. Now, COVID-related mortality rates are higher in patients with diabetes or hypertension or diabetes with hypertension compared to the general population. You see this, uh, patients, overall population, 2.3 mortality rate, patients, severe disease, 10.5, patients with diabetes, 7.3, patients with hypertension, 6. If they have diabetes, hypertension, both is not 13, it's much more than 13. Dear friends, poor glycemic control is with lower survival and, uh, you know, well-controlled blood glucose, you see here, uh, see this, uh, See this well-controlled blood glucose, the survival percentage here is quite good. With the poorly controlled blood glucose, survival is much less. Now, people with diabetes related comorbidities are at higher risk of severe illness from COVID-19, particularly if conditions are not well controlled. Like more than 65 years, we have no, no say on that. Living in a nursing home or long-term care facility, they get more infections. Chronic lung disease along with diabetes mellitus, serious CV disease, immunocompromised. People with severe obesity, we call it diabetes, and diabetes, kidney disease, liver disease, they make the matter still worse. But most important, COVID, diabetes, poor glycemic control, COVID-19 severity. And it has also, caliper long CT computer analysis has shown that, that if the glycemia 
is, is, is less than 7.78, see the type of infection they have. But if the glycemia is more than 7.78 and known is a known diabetic, see the, the amount of lung involvement becomes much more than the blood sugars are much less. Now, hyperglycemia can be of three types. It can be stress hyperglycemia, or it can be a new onset diabetes, or diabetes because that is diabetes because of steroids, because of very severe infection, including mucormycosis, or a pre-existing diabetes can be there. Now, now you see the proportion of new di newly diagnosed diabetics in COVID-19 patients. Now you see, if you look at the uh, look look at the proportion of patients diagnosed, you can find it varies between five percent to almost 65% in the various studies. And you find that the, this is a very important problem that we have a lot of newly diagnosed diabetics in COVID-19 patients. Now, how diabetes influences COVID-19 severity and poorer outcome? It is, it is male gender more prone, inflammation, comorbidity, other comorbidity, diabetes, I'm sorry, hypertension, CBD, obesity, age, impaired kidney function, procoagulable state, all contribute in diabetics for this. And also it has been also shown, shown that the COVID-19 severity <clears throat> can further produce stress, decay, it can produce a beta cell tropism and beta cell damage and more insulin deficiency. So this becomes most, most uh, uh, prominent cause for death in a COVID-19. Now it has been shown today that the anti-inflammatory properties of anti-diabetic drugs are a blessing, a promised land. They call it promised land in COVID-19. From that point of view, in the beginning of COVID-19, you might have heard that hydroxychloroquine was one of the drugs accepted. It to some WHO, you know, I don't call it politics, but some such a policy issue, <clears throat> the COVID HQ, uh, the hydroxychloroquine was not very much accepted. But tell you, my dear friends, believe me, that today it is coming back in a great way. And you know, all anti -di other diabetic drugs like metformin, pyo, they have anti C reactive protein, anti, anti interleukin properties. I've, I've shown in this diagram what are the various <clears throat> inflammatory markers these anti diabetic drugs address. To cut a long story short, all anti diabetic drugs do have some effect, some effect on the, on the, on the, on the inflammatory markers. So they're wonderful drugs. Now, statins. Now, they reduce low density uh, lipoprotein. They have beneficial pleiotropy effect on the endothelium, such as decreasing the degree of inflammation. So, may be beneficial in a case of COVID-19 and diabetes. Now, if somebody gets mucormycosis or what we call black fungus in COVID-19, and I don't know, it's a, they say that diabetes, mucormycosis, and COVID-19 as a recipe for a disaster, post-COVID-19 sepsis today has emerged as a significant problem. India is both the diabetes capital as well as mucormycosis capital because of diabetes of the world. Mucormycosis has become a diabetes defining illness. And one of the most devastating complications in uncontrolled diabetes, mortality between 40 to 80%. Now, if you want to, dis to, to find out the strategies for, the, for managing diabetic patients uh, in the, in the, with COVID-19, uh, based on the cardiometabolic status and CV risk factors, it has been shown that we, you evaluate the risk factor, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and smoking, and give the drugs that has been given here. And this have taken the diabetes care 2020, and it is simple. DPP4, the beneficial effect of ACE inhibitor, ARBs, and also appropriate anticoagulants is a must. And, and also insulin is the preferred drug. You can also can use DPP4 and GLP-1 RAs. For high-risk patients, identify the evidence of long disease, CAD, MI, heart failure, and access, assess the biomarkers if possible, C-reactive protein, creatinine, EGFR, HB1C. These are all risk factors which are very important. In the ICU, if patient is in ICU, stop all OADs and start with subcutaneous insulin. Therefore, hyperglycemia at hospital admission in, in, in patients with not known diabetes diagnosis is associated with this greater inflammatory response worse lung disease, increased risk of mortality to an extent that can be greater than, than anyone that can produce. It's not 7 plus 6, 13. It can be much more than 13. In hospitals, poor glycemic control and increased glucose variability are the associated with poor prognosis. To which extent at hospital admission, hyperglycemia is due to stress condition, uh, it, is to be, it remains to be fully ascertained. 
dear friends uh, i do not have time to speak about all the other comorbidities if chairperson kindly allow me two three minutes more i'll just say that uh, uh, dyslipidemia dyslipidemia is a great risk factor for covid 19 outcome also patients who are already on lipid lowering medications with the dyslipidemia to strictly adhere to the anti uh, lipidemic treatment uh, during covid 19 and post covid 19 patients who are on suboptimal lipid lowering drug you know many a majority of the patients in our country on the subclinical lipid lowering drugs should be given intensified therapy during and following covid infection covid patients with dyslipidemia should be closely monitored for any signs of cardiovascular disease and promptly treated during and following covid all post covid patients with known dyslipidemia should be encouraged to strictly adhere to the therapy and should be regularly followed up to check for the cbds dear friends i'll again show only the summary slide uh, for the for the for the uh, for the obesity now persons with obesity are at increased risk of complications from covid 19 more than ever obesity medicine expertise obesity medicine expertise is needed for patient care some sort of a obesity medicine expertise like 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 ventilation problem like other other problems of obesity one should be aware in diabetes in diabetes covid 19 care or covid 19 care persons with obesity experience psychological stress and they need support very very poorly managed in our country but obesity have a poor psychological support so they need more help resources are available for our patients healthcare providers today because government of india has identified obesity as risk factor for the covid 19 poor outcome so we we provide some assistance we have brought out some cards aims has brought out some cards early experiences tell us that there is no cure for the pandemic we will need to share information and help each other to solve this global public health crisis taking obesity seriously is part of our future control of global not only covid pandemic but the entire viral pandemic so therefore one should take that uh, sir if you kindly allow me i just go to the summary slides i'm not going to show all the slides because it will take a long time but i'm very keen on showing only the summary slides of uh, the various other comorbidities because this was uh, one of my oration ministry wanted me to give so i had prepared for that so i'll just show the last slide at that i would done away with that uh, uh, it was at eight o'clock, and I want to respect the time because uh, all of you are with families in 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 Goa, and it is very important that uh, uh, that, that that you must have time for relaxation. Only two minutes more. People with IHD are increased risk of dying from COVID nineteen because of because of infection and stress on the heart through several mechanisms. Just now, I have written an editorial uh, <clears throat> regarding subclinical. Uh, it will come in IJCP, uh, clinical, but just I finished the editorial where, uh, where I have written about this subclinical heart dysfunction in post-COVID. And the best way to take it out is to keep awareness about it and early on give beta blocker, ARBs and regular monitoring. So therefore, this, this also is shown here again here, COVID-19 vaccine trial uh, included patients with the heart disease and did not demonstrate any serious side effect uh, of vaccine in such patients. No reported interaction between the vaccine and the heart medications, contrary to common belief. Many patients with heart disease take anticoagulant medications. Such patients are at increased risk of bleeding after trauma, including needle insert arm muscle during vaccination. So we, 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 we stop anticoagulation for some. This is the last part of my talk, sir. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, uh, great description. I will not go into the details of it. Uh, you know, COVID-2 binds to the host receptor ACE2 to mediate entry into the cells. But in spite of that, anti-S, anti, I mean, ARB drugs and ACIs are the wonderful drugs. The ACE2, which is expressed in the lungs, heart and vessels, is a key member of the RASH, important pathophysiology of the CVD. ACE2 in its full length form is a membrane bound enzyme, whereas it shutters from form circling the blood at very low levels. CVD associated to COVID 19 likely involves dysregulation of the RAS and ACE2 system due to SARS CoV 19 due to comorbidity, this is hypertension. Now, if, 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 if is there association between COVID 19 and hypertension and the severity? The answer is yes. 
high prevalence of diabetes, other other comorbidities in hospital is patients with COVID-19 in Delhi. I think there's a paper from Amrish uh, from the, I, I think all of, all, okay, okay. So all of you know about it. And uh, I'm not going to details of the paper. It's a beautiful paper by Amrish, where he showed the, showed the, uh, showed the association. So my last slide, the association between hypertension and risk of severe complications or death from COVID-19 infection is confounded by the lack of adjustment for age. Now, it is, it is to, no evidence to suggest that hypertension per se is an independent risk factor for severe complications or death from COVID-19, mm -hmm. unlike diabetes mellitus. Dear friends, I leave you with that. I'd have a nice time in Goa, have nice enjoyment. I, I do not know how to thank my two bosom friends who are chairing my session and, and the people who are in the audience to listen to me. Thank you very much.